You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion. Delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots. You know the actions you can take. How your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day. We have a very focused show. We only chat about items that affect the roof over your head, your bank account, and anything I feel would benefit you. But before we get into our intriguing content today, Please join me in welcoming our featured guest and repeat offender. Welcome back. Welcome back, Chris Bissonette, the FAFSA pro. Good morning. Thank you. Glad to have you with us. Let me remind you, if you ever have any more finance-related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsingleradio.com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance when you call that number. It comes directly to me first. There are operators standing by. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Well, I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan, a plan to save you money. I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference. 800-306-1990. 800 306 1990, and yes, we're celebrating today. Now, I have a tough one today because we got two celebrations today. You know, some days there's a lot. Some days there's not a lot. But I can't read. Today's National Read-A-Book Day. So it is what it is. Audible.com. If you're like me and and you fall asleep by the end of page one, Audible.com, great alternative. And today's National Coffee Ice Cream Day. <sighs> I'm not a big coffee ice cream fan. Are you big? Are you big? Are you big? Chris, you like coffee ice cream? I do not. I'm with you. I'm not a. I, I thought it might be coffee and ice cream, but it's just coffee flavored ice cream. Coffee flavored ice cream. That's very specific. Yeah, I'm. Not, I'm not a fan there. So can I have some chocolate, please. Some Rocky Road or my favorite, peanut butter and chocolate. Yeah. So if you want to know peanut butter and chocolate, that's the one. Let's take a look and see what the markets are doing today. Do we want to see what the markets are doing today? The Dow Jones Industrial Average down 220 points. Ooh. S&P 500 down 38. The NASDAQ down 157. And oil up 50 cents a barrel. So apparently while the president was sleeping or on vacation or both, we lost that window of opportunity. Remember the president used the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to help with oil, with gas prices. And they used a target price of about $70 a barrel that they would start refilling the Strategic Petroleum Reserve at that point. Well, apparently the president was sleeping and they didn't do it. Now we're looking here at about, what, $87 a barrel. And if they go to try and fill the Strategic Petroleum Reserve now, well, guess what? That puts more demand out there. And Saudi Arabia said they're going to keep supply low. So that would just help increase gas prices. So hopefully he'll wake up and realize, don't do that, Mr. President. You know, the only good thing about him being on vacation for about half of his term so far, didn't screw up anything. Uh, did you watch that that presentation yesterday? Of the medal of, medal of, I think it was a medal of honor. Yes. And he left in the middle. I mean, what's that all about? They said there's a door that he's supposed to exit to the right too. So but they might supposed to go down the middle. Right, but but he probably could have waited till after the benediction too, right? Yes. Just just throwing that out there. Uh, gas prices five dollars thirty four point seven cents here in the formerly Golden State. Uh, the only place I can, you know, the other ones, they all, they all, every one of them make me ill, except for our tremendous underwriter, Lori. She's paying $3.35.8 a gallon, three thirty, call it three thirty six in Louisiana. Now I, I get it. You got to go to Louisiana to get that gas price, 
but compared to our 535 here in California, and I told you a couple of weeks ago, I was out on the road, paid a little over $6 a gallon. Well, it's going there every, for everybody. So remember, we're up about 20% recently on gas prices. So if you haven't felt the pinch yet, you're going to. And I know, I know there's those folks that say, well, I've got a Tesla. Well, guess what runs the electricity? Yeah. And they're talking now natural gas. They're, they're not wanting to stock up on natural gas. So we'll probably see an extra cost again this year of gas prices going up. You know, you look at the news and nothing you can see in the news makes any sense. I'm, I'm looking at yesterday, and I, and I don't follow this one a whole lot. Especially because you get some of the loons. Proud Boys leader, Henry Enrique Tario. So this is a fascinating story because he was sentenced to 22 years for as the longest punishment given to anybody for the January 6th storming of the U.S. Capitol. He was not there. The news comes after he was convicted four months ago of seditious conspiracy. So I looked, and I wanted to see what is a normal sentence for seditious conspiracy, if there is such a thing. Well, he got 22 years, and if you go to Cornell's Law School, the maximum is 20 years. Huh. wonder what that's all about. Now, in Minnesota, I guess you get, a law, get away with this stuff, so you can burn down the government buildings in Minnesota. But if you're in Washington, D.C., you know, you're not allowed to do that in Washington, so... You know, nothing, I just, nothing burned. I mean, you, you right? Mean, you mean a tour of the? Yeah, <laughs> not allowed to tour the capital. Not allowed to not allowed to tour the capital when they don't want you to. So that's just kind of a fascinating one right there that that we're watching. Uh, what else is going on in the news? Uh, there's uh, there's a lot going on right now. Watching um, Meta. You know, we're gonna watch this one. So Meta, that's Facebook, discontinuing the news in England, France, and Germany by the end of the year. They don't want to get, take those payments uh, or those the, the agencies don't want to put their stuff on there for free. So Meta, they're dropping that one. Interesting right there. Have you seen this latest one as well? There's a new, um, I think it's called an ETF. Chris, you might know these things better than me. So Vivek Ramaswamy has come up with a new ETF that's gone over a billion dollars already. And it's it's an anti-ESG fund. So that's an interesting one. So, you know, you've got BlackRock, or Black, I think it's BlackRock, that has their fund where it's all the woke stuff, right? So they, they watch companies, they want to make sure that they've got enough Bud Light commercials and the like, and they invest their money there. Well, the fund now that Vivek Ramaswamy has come out with is an anti-ESG fund. So they really just want companies that are making money. Is that a surprise to anybody? Surprise, surprise, surprise. So they, hit a, they just hit a billion dollars in assets. So you know, you're putting your money where your mouth is. So I guess they've got Peter Thiel is invested in it and a few other of these big wigs. So that's going to be an interesting one to watch and see how the two combat one another, where we watch the anti-ESG and the pro-ESG. So, you know, when you're investing your money, if you're putting your 401k in there, teachers, pension funds, whatever, doesn't it make sense to you that all they really care about is making money for whatever the institution is that they're trying to, to deal with? Are they trying to put out there their their political opinions how's that worked out for bud light and for target and disney disney's shares cut in half just watching some of these things so it wouldn't surprise me if this fund does pretty well and being that vivek isn't gonna win for president just throw that out there for you got a good backup plan for himself there you're listening to ron Siegel radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets when we come back, who needs a FAFSA? We're going to talk about it. Mortgage rates, past, present, maybe even the future. We'll talk about that one, how cash-only spending affects your FICO score. All that and more. Reach me any time off air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. 
Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel one on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numeral one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Ron Siegel Radio. Your home and mortgage connection. Homeowners over the age of 62 are taking back financial control after retirement with reverse mortgages. And the Siegel Lending Team is here to help you use it to your advantage. Call Ron Siegel with Geneva Financial to receive your free information booklet with no obligation. The booklet answers all your questions, and the best part is you still own your home. Call Ron Siegel at 1-800-306-1990 or visit ronsiegelradio.com. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Are you like many of your neighbors trying to figure out how to pay off your debts so you could retire someday? Build bigger savings. Invest in opportunities. Visit rsrnodebt.com. Debt will destroy 50% of Americans from being able to retire earlier and with more. What if you could have a guaranteed program that could show you how to eliminate all of your debt in 10 years or less, all without having to spend more each month than you spend right now? Yes, that's correct. All without spending more from your checkbook each month than you are today. Get your free analysis today to see if you qualify. Visit rsrnodebt.com. Log on today for your free analysis, rsrnodebt.com. No purchase necessary. The free analysis takes only two minutes, rsrnodebt.com. Ron Siegel Radio is your home and mortgage connection. Go to rsrnodebt.com, rsrnodebt.com. Are you a renter and tired of making monthly payments? Paying off someone else's mortgage? Hey, it's Ron Siegel here to help you stop renting and start owning your dream home with amazing low interest rates. And you can potentially qualify for a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket. So stop renting. Start owning with Ron Siegel. Learn more at ronsiegelradio.com and start owning today. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California. Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 01869452. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. 1990. The Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. And every day at this time, OBMMI, they provide the most comprehensive, accurate, and timely interactive analysis of pricing ever conducted in the mortgage industry. Calculated from actual locked rates. They don't tell us what the points paid, points received, or APR. They just tell us the actual locked rates 
across their 42% of all mortgage transactions nationwide. So what happened yesterday? 30-year conforming, 7.153 up. 30-year jumbos came down a little bit, 7.444. 30-year FHA up, 6.993. 30-year USDAs were down a little bit. That's the rural areas, generally no down payments, 6.902. And the best loan on the market for those that earned it, that would be the 30-year VA loan, 6.839. That was up as well. And if you want to get our early morning commentary, we try and get it out early morning, every day as early as we can possibly get the data. It's all data dependent, just like the Fed would say. RSRMarketMinute.com. RSRMarketMinute.com. It's an email we send out. It's usually about two pages, real easy read because I'm a simple guy. And it just gives you an idea of what we're seeing, what we're thinking for the market on mortgage rates for that day. Speaking of that day, let's take a look. 10-year treasury up three basis points. S&P 500 down 3.39. And we've got the 30-year bond, the mortgage-backed securities, down 23 basis points. Yeah, that means interest rates are going up again today. So we'll see what happens by the end of the day. That's the way they're looking right now. Why is all this happening? Well, got the Fed speakers are out there. Several Fed members sound like they already are ready for a pause for September, which is not a big surprise. The interest rates are not going to be increased in September from the Federal Reserve. November, they probably will be, but Fed, not in, in September. Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester said that inflation is still too high, but said that she will not wait for inflation to reach 2% to stop hiking rates as if she has the exclusive vote. Nor will we wait for inflation to reach 2% to cut rates. First sign that she's starting to look into the future. Isn't that about time? Philly Fed President Patrick Harker said that the Fed may be at a point to hold rates steady. Boston Fed President Collins hold restrictive but near peak. Not indicating any cut, but wasn't suggesting we need to hike now. Still waiting to hear from Williams, Bostic, Bowman, and Michael Barr. Black Knight price index. This is another one. We've got to really be careful of this because you get idiots. And I, Such you know, it's the only idiot. way I can possibly Such put an it. Idiot. Such an idiot. Diana Olick, CNBC, 10 years now. She's been wrong. Now, how do you keep somebody for 10 years being wrong, exclusively wrong? She's been talking about real estate, and you know I'm, I'm still waiting. I'm hoping that eventually we can say that she got something right. But we're waiting 10 years now, and she hasn't got it right yet. So what is she telling misleading people about today? Well, whenever we're giving out or, or sharing information on home prices, we always look at seasonally adjusted numbers. Unless it suits your narrative, that you don't want seasonally adjusted numbers, right, Diana Olick? Well, Black Knight reported that home prices rose 1.5% in July, the biggest acceleration from the 0.7% rise in June. Home prices are up 2.3% year over year and continue to set new all-time highs for the third month in a row. From the beginning of the year, home prices are up 4.4%, which would equate to 7.5% annualized pace gains if it continued at this pace. 99 out of 100 cities showed gains. But Diana Olick, what does she do? Because she wants to give negative information. Uh, she points out that this non-seasonally adjusted figure was just 0.2%, which is starting to show signs of slowing, according to Miss Olick. According to anybody with half a brain, it's not. But Miss Olick does say that. Every month, Diana Olick has been talking about the seasonally adjusted figure, but now... To fit her narrative, she points it to the lower NSA figure, which is still showing price gains. Now, remember, we've talked about this recently. I don't have the, the exact date that we did the radio segment on it, but I think we sent it over to our friends over at Chapman University because even they are giving incomplete data. They show that real estate values are going to drop 11%. Not true. The median home price is dropping 11% because that's the mix of properties being sold. Your house, probably not dropping 11% anytime soon. 
That's the Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You make the call. 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. Speaking of making the call, our friend Chris Bissonette is in the house. Been a while, buddy. It has been. Thanks for having me back. Glad to have you with us chatting about FAFSA. Yes, college financial planning. What is what does FAFSA stand for? Being that I'm a simple guy. Yes, yeah, no problem. Uh, FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. So that's what you complete each year to qualify for grants, some school scholarships, student loans, work study. So if I understand this correctly, it's a little bit of a misleading name because if, I, if I'm right, you tell me if I, if I am, even if I want to get financial aid from the school, not from the federal, they're going to still want to look at the FAFSA in most cases. 99% of schools, yes, would want to use the FAFSA. They use the FAFSA to qualify for financial aid. 1% use the CSS profile. Okay, so basically if you're going to college and you want any hope of getting federal aid, local aid, grants, you know, a, a presidential scholarship. Some scholarships can be when you apply to the school because that's based off your grades. But if you want to get like a grant based on financial need, a student loan, you have to complete the FAFSA. Well, student student loans, that, and, and we talk about student loans a lot on Ron Siegel Radio. Again, rsrstudentloanhelp.com if you want to get more information on that, rsrstudentloanhelp.com. Those are for people that had student loans. But the price of college is just skyrocketing. It has skyrocketed. I was mentioning at the break that uh, a client had sent me over their award letter for USC, and it was the first time I had seen a nine in front of the cost of attendance. So it was 90242 for this year to attend Southern California. Now, what is when you when you say night? Is that just the tuition plus That's, room for room and books, or is that including? So, how they determine it? They call it's called cost of attendance. That's tuition, room and board, and sometimes miscellaneous, but usually tuition, room and board, and books. Wow, yeah, that, that I think the I think tuition is sixty thousand. Just the tuition. Same with Chapman. I think it's sixty thousand. So when you start looking at those things, it is. Do you have data and man on how long people are going? How long it takes somebody to get that four year degree? Well, the average is 5.6 years. 5.6 years to get the four year degree. And one third of freshmen changes majors or drops out. So a lot of Americans are just doing it completely wrong. They kind of give up when they get to this point, go to community college, we'll figure it out. But there's usually not a plan. Wow. It's so one third dropout. Or change majors. So they're just picking the wrong major, wrong school, taking too long. It's it's kind of a big mess. I call it the college planning dilemma. And then the strategy is to do loans. And I think the average student loan, if you have one, is about 44000 now. 44000 on the average student loan. If you have one. Some students don't. But if you have one, it's about 44000 Wow. And you wonder why we've been spending so much time talking about student loans being that, you know, uh, Six days ago, you probably got a statement. If you had a student loan six days ago, you got your statements, and they start becoming due again the first of October. I Unless think the average payment was five hundred dollars or something. Yeah, there it's, it's it's a lot of money. Now I shared just recently, so it, well we could figure it out because I think the la the last number I saw the average uh, interest was six and a half percent, maybe higher now, being that interest rates have gone up, but six and a half percent. And, you know, 44000 is a lot of money. Yeah, the most I've seen, I've seen it twice, was 400000 in student loans. Well. I've seen it twice. And we, we, we did uh, run across one just recently that was right around, I think it was around 300000 we talked about. And it helped. It was, it was it's, a, it's a very, very sorry story because it actually helped build that football stadium over there in Inglewood. Because that company ended up refinancing these folks, this lady. She was a psychologist. I'll tell the story real quick because I want to get back on to what you and I want to talk about, Chris. But basically, she took, uh, I think it was about $300,000, $340,000 in student loans, refinanced them into about a $4,000 a month payment for the next 25 years. The catch was 
Had she gone and talked to our friends over rsrstudentloanhelp.com, her monthly payment would have been $1,400. So it's over $2,600 in savings based on just the laws that are already on the books, not the fantasies that we hear from the, from the administration and, and, and politicians, but the laws that are on the books would have gone to about $1,400. The catch was she'd already made seven years worth of payments and would have only had to make those payments for another three years. Going to cost her over half a million dollars extra by refinancing. Don't refinance. RSRstudentloanhelp.com. Check them out first. RSRstudentloanhelp.com. Let's get back to our conversation, chatting with Chris about, you know, may, may be a ways of, of positioning because, you know, you help people fill out the form. Yes, I work with a company that will complete it, has power of attorney to do it, just like your CPA does your taxes. But that's really not your full mission. Yeah. So that ideally what we want to do is we look at the client's financial situation to see if anything can be changed prior to applying, which is all legal. It's not like a five-year look back like Medicare. So you could have a million dollars in your checking account today, move it, then file the FAFSA. They only go by the date of the FAFSA. So there's little things you can do to qualify for more aid. And then the second thing you can do is you can- Hold appeal. on to that. Yeah. We're going to talk about strategies and- appealing. When we come back, you're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. Reach me anytime off air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Mortgage rates, past, present, and possibly future on deck. How cash only spending affects your FICO score more and more. Reach me anytime off air number 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com, facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numeral 1 on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Ron Siegel Radio. Your home and business station. Ron Siegel Radio. Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars, and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Are you like many of your neighbors trying to figure out how to pay off your debts so you can retire someday? Build bigger savings. Invest in opportunities. Visit rsrnodebt.com. Debt will destroy 50% of Americans from being able to retire earlier and with more. What if you could have a guaranteed program that could show you how to eliminate all of your debt in 10 years or less, all without having to spend more each month than you spend right now? Yes, that's correct all without spending more from your checkbook each month than you are today. Get your free analysis today to see if you qualify. Visit rsrnodebt.com. Log on today for your free analysis, rsrnodebt.com. No purchase necessary. The free analysis takes only two minutes, rsrnodebt.com. Ron Siegel Radio is your home and mortgage connection. Go to rsrnodebt.com rsrnodebt.com. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 01869452. Are you a renter and tired of making monthly payments? 
Paying off someone else's mortgage? Hey, it's Ron Siegel here to help you stop renting and start owning your dream home with amazing low interest rates. And you could potentially qualify for a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket. So stop renting. Start owning with Ron Siegel. Learn more at ronsegalradio.com and start owning today. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or any time at 800 306 1990 1990, the real-time real estate segment today being brought to you by rsrmoney.com, rsrmoney.com. Great tool, great site. I highly recommend, well, I pay for it. It costs you nothing. Why else would you think that I think it's great? It's going to give you, it's going to monitor your credit score, monitor your assets, monitor your, your bank accounts. Monitor your real estate values, and 97% of the properties across the United States that are available for sale are listed right there, rsrmoney.com. Mortgage rates, past, present, and possible future. If you're hoping to buy a home this year, you're probably paying close attention to mortgage rates. Since mortgage rates impact what you can afford when you take out a home loan, and affordability is a challenge today, it's a good time to look at the big picture of where mortgage rates have been historically compared to where they are now. Beyond that, it's important to understand their relationship with inflation for insights into where mortgage rates might go in the near future. Giving context to the sticker shock, Freddie Mac has been tracking the 30-year fixed mortgage rate since April 1971. Every week they release the results of their primary mortgage market survey, which is averages mortgage rate applicate mortgage application data from lenders across the country. If you're watching us on ronsegalradio.tv, any of our socials, or the ABC News & Talk AM 1490 video feed, you're seeing a chart of mortgage rates. 30-year fixed rate, April of 1971, all the way through to today. Looking at the right side of the graph, mortgage rates have increased significantly since the start of last year. But even with that rise, today's rates are still below the 52-year average. While the historical perspective is good context, buyers have gotten used to mortgage rates between 3 and 5%, which is where they've been over the past 15 years. 7.18 is the 52-year average, 7.18%. So that's because it explains why the recent jump in rates have have you feeling sticker shock. Even though they're close to the long-term average, while many buyers have adjusted to elevated, elevated rates over the past year, a slightly lower rate would be a welcome sight. To determine if that's a realistic possibility, it's important to look at inflation. Where could mortgage rates go in the future? The Federal Reserve has been working hard to lower inflation since early 2022. That's significant because historically, there's been a connection between inflation and mortgage rates. If you look at the next graph, you'll see that again. If you're, not, if you're listening to us on radio, you got to go back and, and look in the archives of Ron Siegel Radio, or you can check out any of our socials or YouTube. They're, it's all there. And we got a chart of inflation and the 30-year fixed rate mortgage. And this goes back, I don't have the exact date that it goes back to, but graph shows a pretty reliable relationship between inflation and mortgage rates. Again, this is according to the BLS and Freddie Mac. Looking at the left side of the graph, each time inflation moves significantly, that's the blue lines, mortgage rates follow suit shortly after. That'd be the green lines. The circled portion of the graph points out the most recent spike in inflation with mortgage rates following closely behind. As inflation has moderated a bit this year, mortgage rates haven't yet made a similar move. That means if history is any guide, the market is waiting for mortgage rates to follow inflation and head back down. It's impossible to accurately predict where mortgage rates will go for the for sure, but moderating inflation means mortgage rates going down in the near future would fit a well-established trend. Bottom line, to est- understand where mortgage rates may be going, it's helpful to look at where they've been in the past. That's a clear connection between inflation and mortgage rates. And if that historical relationship holds true, the recent decline in inflation may mean good news 
for the future of mortgage rates and your home ownership goals. Again, give me a call at 800-306-1990. Let's put together a strategic plan for you. That's the real-time real estate segment again brought to you by rsrmoney.com, rsrmoney.com. Continue our conversation. Chris Bissonette, he's the FAFSA pro. He's in here chatting with us. And we were talking before the break about the 90,000, 90 plus for USC. And I saw an article, was it yesterday that came out? Was it, who came out yesterday with the article about uh, best college in America is um, Princeton? And they used, with, with basically what they said was it's based on, graduation rate, people that starting and finishing, uh, that's what they were kind of using as, as their metric. I use uh, Princeton in my software. Interesting with Princeton, um, you can go there for free. If you have a low EFC number, like on your FAFSA, it's $8 is what it's cost per year. Wow. And the reason being is they have $3 million per student. That's why to give you. Three million per student. Explain how that works. Yeah, so each school has an endowment, which is just a bunch of money in it, and they can give money to the students. So uh, USC has eight billion, for example, in its endowment, and US, or excuse me, Harvard has forty-five billion, which is half the uh, more than half the countries on Earth. So these schools have incredible amounts of money to give you if you qualify. So you mentioned Princeton, you mentioned USC, and you mentioned Harvard. Yes. Those are all private schools, aren't they? Yeah, they're the ones that have all the money. So. You can go to those schools for free if you can uh, qualify financially. So basically, if I'm hearing right, that you're better off applying to a private school than you are to a public school. It depends. But yeah, if you want to, you know, the the one issue I see a lot of people do is they're like, let's say maybe lower income. So they apply to the state schools. Right. And I say, well, you're not going to get any money at these schools. If you can get in, you want to apply to the most expensive schools you can find because it'll be way less expensive. And most people don't know that. That's interesting. So now before the break, you were talking about strategies. Yes, yeah, strategies. So there's ways. So when someone, uh, when I work with a family, I look at their financial picture, income and assets, and then I determine if there's something we can do to get the numbers down so they'll qualify for more aid. A lot of people don't know you've got to do the FAFSA process every single year, which surprises some people. And so each year you can do things to qualify for more free money, free money. Grants really is what it is. So if, I, if, I, if I'm a high net worth individual, uh, maybe I go and I win the lottery tonight. Thankfully, I don't have any kids ready for school. But is that what you're talking about? Is that, you know, I, I could even get aid even if I had that kind of wealth? You can as long as it's in the certain places. So like home equity, for example, doesn't count on the FAFSA. So you home equity have, does not count. You could have a $10 million house. They don't count it. You could have $100 million in your 401k or IRA. They don't count it. What they're really looking at is uh, liquid assets. So you have like a brokerage account or you have rental properties. And but still, no way, Rental properties make, isn't a liquid asset, though. It's still counted as an investment. But you can also... Instead of putting the value, you can use the tax assessed value. And so there's little strategies you can do to get more aid. So it, it sounds to me it's like it's almost along the same lines as being um, kind of like doing my taxes, right? I mean, I don't know all of the no. tax code. It is. It's very, it's very sophisticated. I work with some very smart people. They submit their fast. How'd you get in? I'm just, you know, so <laughs> it was my, just kidding right there. Buddy. It was the Arizona State my degree so that's, oh arizona that's state yeah. that's what that's, that's what did it for that's you what, huh? that's what accelerated me. <laughs> um but i work with some that, was, that was the, that was the school of bud light wasn't it um did we have bud light i think we we're more miller light <laughs> oh okay <laughs> uh, but what's very interesting these people will submit the fafsa then like a week later hire me so then i gotta go in and amend it but it's amazing the mistakes people make that literally you're getting no aid just in the way you answered one question and then I've got to correct it, and then they end up getting a bunch of aid. So it's very tricky. It's like your taxes. If you had an eighty thousand dollar tax bill, are you going to turbo tax it, or are you going to talk to a CPA? It's kind of the same thing. Okay. So one of the things that I always like on Ron Segal Radio is because I am a simple guy. Story time with Chris. 
Do you have a Do you have any good stories you yeah, can share? I'll give I'll give you a good one. A good uh, once upon a time. So <laughs> so each a lot of people don't know this that you can do what's called financial reconsideration. So I don't even know what financial reconsideration is. Yeah. So basically, you get your letter. I mean, it's from like my school. wife saying she's reconsidering whether we should have gotten married yes. because the credit card does not have the high enough balance. So each year the school kicks out an award letter that's in the student portal. A lot of people don't even know this. And I said, send it to me. I want to look at it. We can go back to the school and say, thank you for the aid. However, it's 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 less than we were expecting. Does this work? Well, less than we're expecting. Yeah, less. And so does it work? Yes. 70% of the time when you go back to the school and ask for more money, which is money coming directly from the school, it generates more aid. The most I've received in an appeal I had a client will go into USC, um, have a lot of clients go to USC because of the proximity here. He received zero. We went back and appealed. He received 8,000. I had to play that for you because I know you went to Arizona State. Yes. Um, <laughs> love, love say so. And then and then they bumped it up to 43,000. So he went from zero to 43,000 in grants, free money. This year, they gave 53,000. So by him meeting me, and me helping him, he's received $100,000 in free money and grants to go to USC. Wow. Yeah. Life-changing. That, that's serious. Money. Yeah, life-changing. You know, that those, those numbers, because that, now, without obviously, we don't know the names, so that's good. Um, would he have been able to go there other, without having met you? I, I think he would have, but he would have had to do what's called a parent plus loan, which is basically the parents taking out a loan for like 50 grand or 60 grand or something. Wow. So, so he may have been able to go there, but his parents would have been saddled with this. And those loan rates on the parent plus loan are like eight to 12% now. Like it's a ridiculously high loan rate. Wow. And again, even if you have a parent plus loan already, rsrstudentloanhelp.com, rsrstudentloanhelp.com. Go over there, talk to those folks. Chatting is free. I'm just going to throw that out there. Do they charge if they, if, if you need the help? Yes. Not a lot of money. But the conversation, absolutely free. And when you go on to rsrstudentloanhelp.com, you're going to put in four or five numbers and you'll find out you know, a worst case scenario of how much money you're going to save. rsrstudentloanhelp.com. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, more with Chris Bissonette. We're chatting about FAFSA. We've got uh, changes in the FAFSA. Are there a lot of changes? We'll talk to Chris about that. And how cash only spending affects your FICO scores. All that and more. Reach me anytime. Off air number 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel One on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the number one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Ron Siegel Radio. Your home and mortgage. Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars, and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Are you tired of paying rent? Are you tired of paying someone else's mortgage? Do you know qualified folks can potentially purchase a $500,000 home for less than $5,000 out of pocket? Ron Siegel can help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. If you're tired of paying someone else's mortgage, reach out to Ron today at ronismylender.com. That's ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Hey friends, do you dream of mortgage-free home ownership? Are you aware that even if you own your home free and clear, it could still be costing you thousands per year? The Siegel Lending Team can help you generate tax-free income, accumulate family wealth, and maintain ownership of your home. By simply emailing your most recent mortgage statement, you'll receive a no-obligation real estate plan. 
Learn more by calling 1-800-306-1990 or email me your recent mortgage statement to PEAR at ronsegalradio.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Your credit matters today being brought to you by rsrstudentloanhelp.com, rsrstudentloanhelp.com. Let's take a look and see what the how cash-only spending affects your FICO score. As interest rates rise and more businesses charge a fee for using credit cards, more people are opting to tuck their credit cards away and embrace a cash-only lifestyle. Returning to cash does have some appeal. Many people find that using cash makes it easier to stick to a budget and steer clear of debt. Relying on cash can also save money since it eliminates credit card interest and allows you to avoid credit card convenience fees. However, abandoning credit cards means trading the perks that come with using a credit card. For instance, you miss the opportunity to earn rewards and forego protections like extended warranty coverage and purchase protection. Opting out of credit can impact your FICO score and progress toward reaching your financial goals. Here are two key ways that this could impact your FICO score. You're, you may not have a FICO score. Since cash payments aren't included in your credit report, which holds the information used to calculate your FICO score, cash-only spending doesn't impact your credit. Your credit report needs at least one credit account that's been open and active in the past six months to generate a FICO score for you. It's possible to experience a loss of scoreability if your credit file becomes stale, meaning your accounts aren't updated for several months. Younger consumers in particular may be impacted by cash-only spending. In a recent FICO survey, 29% of Gen Z answered that they don't have a credit score or don't know if they have one compared to 8% of boomers. Without a credit, a scorable credit history, it's challenging to access, access credit-based products and services since businesses often rely on credit information to approve applications and set pricing. That means you could face roadblocks when you're buying a house or car, renting an apartment, or even purchasing a cell phone on an installment plan. Note that having no FICO score at all is different from having bad credit, which is the result of mishandling credit accounts. Likewise, you won't have a zero FICO score since scores range from 300 to 850. You simply won't have a score at all. Your FICO score may not be high enough to get approved, even if you only have one or two accounts listed on your credit report, like a student loan or being an authorized user. Your FICO score might not meet the minimum requirements set by certain lenders. Your FICO score takes into account the types of credit you have, your mix. It contributes, contributes to 10% of your score. Showing that you can manage different types of credit helps increase your FICO score. This means having both revolving and credit and installment loans with a history of on-time payments. Sticking to cash can make you a responsible spender, but that doesn't necessarily show you're a responsible borrower. Make sure you go and just visit rsrccpayment.com, rsrccpayment.com, and that'll help you out with figuring, getting your score maximized. And hey, just pay the th your your regular bills, your credit, your uh, cell phone bill, your Netflix bill, your uh, Starbucks bill. Pay those with three different credit cards, and pay them immediately. Maybe the next day. You know that you get your Verizon bill, say on the sixth of the month. Set it up so it gets automatically paid by your credit card, and then set an auto pay at your bank for that amount on the seventh of the month. Just like cash but it keeps your credit scores active and maximized. That is Your Credit Matters, brought to you by creditsanitizer.com. You have a credit report. It is wrong. What are you doing about it? Continuing our conversation, Chris Bissonette is with us this morning talking about FAFSA. He is the FAFSA pro. And I guess you can find Chris everywhere under FAFSA pro. Yes, I have a LinkedIn, a Facebook page, a uh, website. It's okay, now. Let's see, the, the college students or high school students, they probably don't even know how to spell LinkedIn. Um, Facebook is for old people like me. Are you on Instagram with that FAFSA Pro? 
I don't have the FAFSA Pro. Exam. No name there. Okay, well, go to LinkedIn and Facebook. FAFSA Pro. Or just FAFSAPro.us. FAFSAPro.us. Okay, that's an easy one. Yeah. So changes on the FAFSA, does it change like, like taxes? Well, they've been – this year, they're changing it for the first time in like 20 years. So they originally brought this FAFSA Change Simplification Act up years ago, but it keeps getting pushed off. Like they, the site wasn't ready. So this year, rolling it out, you can't file the FAFSA October 1st like you normally can. You have to wait till December 1st because wow. they're behind. So you got to wait two more months. Is this a federal agency? I guess. Yeah. You know, and uh, the FAFSA itself is like super archaic. So you would go in and it's just like the software super old and they need to be updated. But the big changes this year are one, they're removing the multiple student discount. So if you have two children in college at the same time, they would cut your EFC, your the amount of money you're supposed to pay in half. So it would be 50 percent for one student, 50 percent for the other student. Starting this year, it's 100 percent for each one. So if you have two kids in college, Potentially, cost of college is going to go up tremendously for these families. Um, that's the real big one. Then they're changing. That's huge. It's huge. And some people are going to be really shocked when they're like, why is it like 20, 30, 40,000 more this year? Oh, we removed the multiple student discount. So that's going to be a shock for some people. So that'll probably help you, though, in your mission to help people lower uh, the numbers. Put, their, put their assets in the right places. It can. And the, the only problem sometimes a lot of it's based off income and I can't do anything about the income because it go, goes back two years. But that's going to be a big one. They're also changing the expected family contribution. That's just a term that they use now called student aid index. It's kind of the same thing, but they just decided that it was confusing. People thought that's what they paid. But it wasn't. It was kind of a range. So now it's called a student aid index. And then there's a couple other minor changes, but the, those are the kind of the big ones. Wow. Okay. So the big one there, I mean, you can call it whatever you want as far as that EFC changing the student aid index, but that multiple student discount, who, where does this come from? Do you know, Chris? I mean, is it, is it a, is it from uh, Department of Education? Federal, federal government, I guess. So you think the federal government? I said, I remember start hearing this like three years ago that they were coming out with all this stuff. And then, oh, no, we're pushing it out. Oh, no, we're pushing it out. I wouldn't be surprised if, like I said, they were supposed to, usually you can file the fast for October 1st, but this year's December 1st, almost like they're not ready yet. So we'll see what happens. But it's there's a big problem filing the FAFSA. It's a lot of people have issues with it. So do you think that the, and, and I'm sure you're just going to hypothecate like I would, is, you know, is our deadline for making a decision for schools going to be pushed back two months? Um, I don't, I don't think so. Um, right, so I don't make know. You, I think maybe they can. Yeah, I, I mean, I know that's not your wheelhouse, but they do put, there, there are little decision dates. They come out and say, Hey, like May 1st, you've got to put your money down or April 1st, you got to make a commitment. I don't know how that's going to affect things with, uh, with, with FAFSA. It's a, it's like, it's very confusing the whole process. So it's going to, it's going to make it even more important though. The bottom line is it'll make it even more important if, Somebody like you who's doing this for numerous families and been doing it for many, many years, you know, you don't have the answers. What is the average Joe like me going to say? Right. I'm going to have less answers. Right. So oh. it's going to be more important to talk to someone like yourself who's collaborating with, because I know the, some of the services that you, you're in partners with, there's a lot of collaboration that goes on around the country with different people that are doing things like you do. Mm -hmm. And you can share, okay, this is what I found out today. And the next guy can say, or, this, or gal, this is what I found out today. Whereas as an individual parent with my kids going to school, with grandparent, I don't have that luxury. Yeah, you have to go online and try and search it. And it's kind of... Yeah, it's and everything kind of, that's online is true. It's very, very confusing stuff. Like I said, the easiest way to liken it to, you have an $80,000 tax bill, right? Are you going to turbo tax it or are you going to maybe talk to maybe a CPA or some sort of tax professional and see if maybe we can get that down to 60000 It's the same thing with college. It's just that there's very few people like me in the U.S. who do this. So people just do it themselves. You know, I was saying that even without college, that there's very few people like you. That's a whole <laughs> Wait, wait, you know something? I do have that. Uh... <laughs> if you want more information about this, give me a call at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Be happy to put you in touch with Chris Bissonette. He is the FAFSA pro. We've been chatting with Chris for several years. 
on FAFSA and college financial planning. And there's so many stories. There's no way we could get to all of them where we've heard of, of, you know, families all the way from moderate income to very high net worth individuals who have had successes by having a consultation with Chris and his team. So if you want to meet Chris, give me a call again, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. And as always, we ask, set that first radio preset button to come back here and join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to Josh and Sean who are engineering us today. And of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime. 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsingleradio.com. And remember, make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio. My boss just pushed me over the limit. I'd like to call him something.